Welcome back. It's Oscar season, and so we sent Sheldon Neal to catch up on all the buzz around these Academy Awards. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, a question for you. Um, we're talking about dystopian films and that genre specifically. Um, well, let me ask you a question to start with this. Why do we need films to help us talk about the state of the world that we live in? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even limit it to just films. I think art in general is a place where we bring up a lot of the subjects that are ultimately important to humanity and maybe too uncomfortable or um, maybe un unconnectable in terms of you know, a, a sort of open discussion. And in, in fact, art can often lead us into having these sorts of broader ideas or having this informed discussion around all sorts of things. I think film, because it's the most pervasive, most popular art form of the past hundred or so years, and, and because it is the combination of so many other art forms, you know, it's moving pictures, it's sound, it's, it's uh, dialogue, it's all these sorts of things mixed together. It has a specific power in terms of recreating the human experience. Is there a danger if society we become so reliant on films being that bridge to harder discussions? Is there a danger in that? No, I mean, I, I think anything that, that starts debate, that starts conversation is ultimately good. Uh, I mean, I think there's inherent in terms of art and film, in terms of representation and, you know, understanding what the image is mean and how they're used and the effect they may have on us, but in terms of actually starting those sorts of conversations, I think any art that does that is ultimately uh, worthy. So I, I would be, I think the danger is making sure we're always aware of the, the difference between the art and ourselves as the audience and aware of the sort of interactions on that level and that it is art and that, you know, it's coming from a specific place and there's all sorts of analytical ways that we should be looking at this and understanding the ideas that they're actually ultimately presenting. If we zero into the dystopian film genre, mm. uh, I'm going to throw some throwback films here, uh, Elysium or The Hunger Games. Sure. Um, are those films made to, uh, in response to society, desire for something, or is it trying to move society to a place? It's not yet there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, it's a great question, and one that we've often asked about art forms. Are they a mirror, or are they, you know, is it a reflection? Do they reflect us back to ourselves? Mm -hmm or are they trying to advance a sort of conversation? I tend to think because art is created by other humans, they often reflect back to us. And maybe they're, they're trying, it, within that reflection, there's a distortion or an alteration that occurs that allows us to suddenly think of something in a, in a different way. Um, but I, ultimately, I think we, we as the audience tend to be very much inputted into how the art creates and what we ultimately read into it. I'm now turning the corner now to Oscar season. For best picture, we have American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. When you look at the nominees, all of them, what do you think they're all saying? Is there is there a common thread throughout the nominees? I know they're all different films, all yeah. different appeared, but are, is there a commonality between them? Well, I mean, I, the commonality may be even what I just said, is that I, I tend to think they're reflecting a lot back to us in terms of issues we mm. want. We require more engagement yeah. with, whether it's Wolf of Wall Street around uh, financing yeah. or the, the morality of, of capitalism, mm. or uh, it's something like, um, you know, gravity, which That's is right. about isolation and, right. and loneliness and on an emotional and physical level. Uh, 12 Years a Slave, which is about social justice mm -hmm. and inequality. Um, but I think they are, they do speak to a lot of uh, things. So perhaps the through line is that, you know, they're, they're trying to speak back to us or the cinema of engagement. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get a, a reaction or a debate started around them. I think the other through line is one of more of Oscar history, which <laughs> is, you know, traditionally the way Oscars work is um, the thoughtful movies that are made by movie studios come out in the fall yep. and are the ones that ultimately yeah. win yeah. Oscars and, and the, the industry is split in terms of making big large commercial films mostly for the summer and yep. Christmas time and making what used to be called prestige pictures to win awards mm -hmm. and so they're also a representation of the <laughs> desire of producers and studios to win awards yeah. and yeah. so they engage very thoughtful artists to make these movies every year and as a result the Oscars tends to reflect a specific type of production sensibility in, in, in Hollywood and, and on, on some levels globally but especially Hollywood um, that may stand apart from what they're generally considered uh, what they're concerned with on a commercial level. So I think that's also a reflection of just how the industry works yeah. and uh, and the history of Oscars and, and movie awards. Well, we're thrilled to have you with us. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. Lorna back to you. Coming up, when film is a touchstone for our culture, it goes pretty deep. 
So deep, there may be 10 stages of transformation in its plot. Story professor Bobette Buster will help us navigate that when we return.